Hey, Alicia Novin here, and there's a common question you'll hear at the end of an interview, and the question usually goes like this. Do you have any questions for me? And today I wanted to give you five things that you should ask your interviewer. Here we go. Knowing that you're gonna be asked whether you have any questions, you should do some research beforehand so that the questions that you ask are going to have more depth to them. You don't want to ask basic questions about the company because those are things you can research. Find out about the product, the person who's going to interview you, maybe even about the team if you can, and that way the questions that you ask will be more important to basically figure out whether you want to work there. There's some people who will maybe even rate or rank candidates based on how well they ask questions or what kind of questions they ask, but you also want to use it as an opportunity to find out if that's the place you want to be. And that's what I want to focus on is the kinds of questions you should ask so that you get to the root of whether or not that's a team that you want to be a part of. So here we go with number one. It's important to ask your interviewer whether they're trying to solve a very specific problem with this role. And it's probably better if you ask this question at the beginning as opposed to at the end because basically they'll be making assumptions about who you are based on the responses that you give. And if there's a specific problem that they have in the back of their mind about what type of person they're trying to find to help solve that problem, the better you know what that problem is, the more you can craft your responses around addressing that problem and how you are skilled at being able to resolve that problem. So that way they're not just left to their assumptions and trying to figure out whether or not you can solve it, you can speak to that directly. So knowing the problem that they're trying to solve with that role, knowing how that role is gonna function is really gonna help you respond better throughout the course of that interview. Similarly, ask the interviewer what criteria they'll be using to make their selection for the role. And again, if you can ask this in the early part of the interview, that will help you craft your responses so you're always addressing that criteria. When they're asking you questions, they're going to make a lot of assumptions around the responses you give to basically see if you meet that criteria. So when you know what that criteria is, you'll be able to speak to it specifically and ultimately you'll help them out because then they'll know whether or not you're that person for that role. And if you're not selected, at least then you know what criteria you might be weak on so that you can work on that and build on that for the next interview. Now a question that you can ask at the end of an interview is one that will be based on the assumption that you will have the offer and you'll be in the role. And that question is basically asking them how you, they will measure success in that role. And that'll tell you a lot about how they track progress, how they need to support an individual, and the overall transparency. If they can't give you a very clear, concrete answer to that question, that should throw up a red flag. Most people will have a good sense of how they track progress already. They might talk about regular one-on-ones, they might talk about quarterly objectives, and that'll be really helpful and informative because it'll let you know how you're going to be measured for success and what kind of support you have to make sure that you're actually progressing in the way that you want to do. Like I said earlier, hopefully you've researched the company and the product, and if you could, maybe even the team, and that'll tell you a whole lot, but you might want to start asking more specific questions about the dynamics of the team. And an important question to ask would be what roles you'll be interacting with as you go about your day-to-day -day work. That'll tell you a lot about just your role in the team and the broader type of day-to-day -day function you'll serve because you're not always gonna be writing code, and so you wanna know how often you'll be interacting with other individuals. And maybe it won't be you know, non-dev roles, but you'll wanna get a sense of who the other players are on the team and what kind of function you'll be playing. These days, developers know exactly what kind of places they wanna work in, and so they'll ask very direct and specific questions about, you know, is it remote only, or what do the hours look like, is there weekend work? But when you ask very specific questions, one thing that you can actually miss are other areas that might be concerns for you that could get swept under the rug when you're too focused on one thing. So an important question to ask is more broadly, find out what the expectations are around the role, and just discuss them as they get mentioned. So you might want to 
ask about after hour issues or how they manage chaos. You know, are you going to be working on one thing in a predictable fashion or is it going to constantly require you to pivot to something new? And again, you want to start broadly and then based on the responses that are giving you, you might ask more specific questions and ask them to elaborate on that. And that'll give you the information that'll allow you to better assess, is that the kind of environment you want to be a part of? Know that when the interviewer ultimately asks you whether or not you have any questions for them, that they're not waiting for you to ask this magic bullet kind of question that'll make them go, aha, and instantly give you an offer. There's no real pass fail to that question. It's ultimately there for you to figure out whether that's the environment for you. Now there are questions that don't work in your favor, and those are questions that are asking about the company and other basic kind of stuff that you could have researched, and that conveys that you don't have much of an interest in them. But if you ask questions that are insightful and probing and show that you are interested and you're just trying to evaluate the environment and the dynamic of the workplace, then that'll work in your favor and it'll give the opportunity to the interviewer to address those concerns. And you'll get a better answer and you'll get a better picture of whether you wanna be there or not. Now, when you ask questions, make sure that they're not blunt or aggressive or they roll an assumption into them that puts the interviewer on the defensive. And so you want to make sure you're phrasing your questions in a more open-ended way. An example of that is, you know, no one really likes to work on the weekends, and the interviewer knows that, you know that, and if you just directly ask, am I going to have to work on the weekends? That is going to put them on the defensive, and it's a really tough one to navigate because sometimes avoiding those situations can be really difficult, but there might be a ton of nuance that they're going to have to explain, and that's not easy to do when you're coming at it from a defensive angle. But if you were to ask more broadly, what does it look like when the team is behind on something or when there's a deliverable that they have to meet, what does that look like? Now they're able to approach that question with more subtlety and they can give more nuanced uh, responses and they're not on the defensive. So you can get a much more honest picture. You do ultimately want to get to the root of your answer because that is a question or a concern for you. But ultimately you don't want to ask it in such a way where the person feels like it's adversarial. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found it useful. Would love to get your comments about it. And I also run a podcast called Increments and it's about creating the space for us to focus on how we wanna grow in our careers as technologists. It's on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. I hope you'll check it out. Thanks.